buying a used catamaran, it's fun, it's exciting, um, it's also a little nerve wracking and scary. So let's talk about the top 10 things that are worth looking at on the catamaran when you're trying to decide whether this is the boat for you. And this is the second video in my buying a catamaran series. So if you are interested in living this sailing dream, then I invite you to subscribe and please go ahead and hit that notification bell because that way you'll be notified when the next one comes out. And I have a big announcement in the next one. Welcome back to The Freedom Strategy. My name is Heather and I am here to help people turn their dreams into reality. And a lot of you out there have that dream of buying a catamaran and sailing the open seas. I know I certainly do. I bought a catamaran in the past uh, and I am also buying one now. So let's get to the top 10 things that I think are important for you to look at, observe, check out, if you are in the market for a used catamaran. Okay, so first to get an idea of, of where this fits into the buying process. If you check out my last video I did, uh, it gives an overview on the current market, which is a little rough for buyers, um, and how to handle it and walk your way through it. And then you're gonna get to the point where you're actually going to find a catamaran that you are interested in looking into further. That's where this video comes in. You found one that you think maybe this one is it, uh, but you've got to go check it out. Now, today's market is a little bit different. A lot of people choose at this point to just put a deposit down before they have even seen the boat. The problem is that ends up with a lot of people backing out of a boat deal. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, I am a fan of getting yourself to the boat, putting your feet on the boat, touching it, feeling it, uh, seeing what it's like just to make sure that it is worth going through the entire process of putting in offers and coming up with a deal on the boat. So that is where this one fits in. Now, the first catamaran we bought was back in 2018. It was a used catamaran. And so we were searching the market for private party catamarans for sale. We found one in Florida, went out there and put our feet on the boat. And this brings us to point number one, what should you look for? The very first thing is, what is your first impression? How is the boat kept? Is it neat? Is it dirty? Is it sloppy? And you can really get a feel for how the seller has taken care of the boat if you look for these things. They're all pretty straightforward and basic, but when you're walking up to the boat, look at the fenders, see what they look like. Look at the dock lines. Uh, are they neatly piled up or are they just strewn everywhere? Get your feet on the boat. Look at the cockpit. Is it organized? Is it dirty? Are there footprints? everywhere and yes we all know footprints get all over boats but you can tell by the amount of footprints and dirt and grime everywhere if that seller has been taking care of the boat now we went to this boat in florida as i was saying and got on it and it looked okay not bad um and then we just started lifting up all of the little hatches and things and like the first thing we noticed is we lifted up the hatch where the propane tank was and it was full of rat's nests, and I'm not kidding. And it was just like such a punch in the gut because I kind of knew right then like, ooh, this boat has not been taken care of. Um, he did come up with sort of an excuse as to how that just appeared there. I kind of knew better. We did go ahead and move forward. We went on a sea trial and he actually ran the boat aground during the sea trial. So um, that was very unfortunate for him. He's a very, very nice man and I felt horrible but that actually made it really easy for us to walk away because back to point number one about what is the overall exterior condition of the boat, it wasn't great when we first stepped on it. So pay attention to that and honestly go with your gut because really that tells a lot, which kind of leads into the second thing to notice when you are checking out your potential future catamaran, and that is the smell. Now, we all know that boats do tend to have sort of this musty smell. Often they are closed up for lengths of time before you can get to the boat, uh, so that's okay. I am talking about a smell when you walk in and if you can smell the heads right oh. away, you might have a problem. It could be that the last person forgot to flush or something gross like that, but a really foul smell could also mean that the black tanks have a problem. They could be cracked, uh, even if you pour bleach in them and all kinds of stuff, it could be that they need to be replaced. So 
If you smell a very strong sewer-like odor, pay attention. Do not just brush it off as, well, if we just scrub the toilets and pour bleach down them, it'll be fine. That might be the case, but honestly, it's probably not. So that is something that would be actually a deal breaker for me. Now, the next thing that I've always looked for as I'm walking around a boat that I'm thinking about making an offer on is the fiberglass gel coat. What kind of condition is it in? Couple of things to look for. First, just look for the overall condition. Are there a lot of nicks in it? Has it been repaired a lot? You know, repairs are almost impossible to make look just like it was brand new. So walk around the entire outside of the boat, make sure there aren't too many of those nicks and dings that people have repaired, but also look at um, if it has the powdery substance on the outside, which in indicates oxidation. Um, a little bit of that's fine, and you can just buff that and wax that right out, but if it's pretty significant, you really are not gonna get that shiny, smooth exterior surface that you wanna see on the gel coat of your fiberglass of the boat. So just make sure to look at the entire boat to see what kind of condition it is in. A lot of times one side is worse than another. If it's been docked at a particular location and getting worse sun on one side than the other. So look at that. Uh, the other thing about gel coat and the fiberglass that I do is when I go out and step foot on a boat, I always go to the front of the holes. Um, I lean way over the front. Usually I'm hanging on to something just to see, is there a lot of damage to the front of the holes that have been either repaired or not repaired? You wanna see how beaten up the boat has been. Likewise, look along the sides of the hull, particularly on the side of the dock that you are on. It should be pretty easy to see, has this boat been beaten up? Um, a little bit's okay, but you don't want to just have this boat that you're constantly having to repair things and patch things. And then the last thing that I look for when looking at the surface area of the fiberglass and gel coat is I will go look near the stanchions of the standing rigging to see if there's feathering or cracking. Now, to be clear, this does not replace having a survey. That's not what this is about. This is just about to get the general overall view of what condition the boat is in to see if it's worth moving forward to make an offer. Then you hire your surveyor for the survey and see trial but you can look for things like cracks around the stanchion just to see how much stress has been put on that used catamaran. And just having cracks and feathering near the stanchions would not be a deal breaker, but it certainly would be something that maybe even in addition to having the surveyor, you might wanna have somebody inspect the rigging as well. Now, as you are walking around the exterior of the boat, also pay attention to the hatches. Do they latch? Do they close properly? Um, go on the inside and see, can you tell, have there been leaks? Ask the seller, have there been leaks? It's true, they might not be honest with you, but usually you can tell if they're not being honest with you, but they'll usually be honest with you and they'll say, yeah, this one leaks, or I have a new one on order here. Um, I've gone on a couple of boats where they do, they have the replacement hatches. You know, hatches are something that do fail and they're not cheap to fix. So you need to have all of the complete information about them before you decide what you are going to offer for a used catamaran. So check them all out, open them all up, close them all because that tends to be the bigger problem. They don't latch properly um, and look around and just see how much water leakage has there been. Now, quick question for you guys before I go on to the rest of the items to look for. Um, how many of you actually do go physically look at the boat? before you put in an offer, or do you just put in an offer and then you wait until you get the survey and see trial? Um, I would just love to know in today's market what you guys are all thinking. I told you my opinion, I actually like to go see the boat, but uh, I can understand in today's difficult buying market that some people don't. So comment below, do you go see the boat before you put in an offer, or do you wait until you have an agreed upon price? Okay, next one up is a big one the engines. Uh, the first thing I do is I will have the seller start them up, uh, make sure they crank right up, fire up, and then of course you go look over the sides to make sure the water is coming out where it's supposed to come out. Um, but in addition to that, do make sure and verify with them that the odometer is correct. I would say half of the boats we've looked at 
the odometers quit working. Now, usually the seller knows this, they tell you this, and they'll tell you that they've kept log records of it, but it is important for you to know that. Some insurance companies have a real problem if that's the case, so you should at least know that going into it. Uh, so just, you know, make sure the odometer reading matches what they said that the engine hours are, and also that they are in fact working. In addition to that, I, I will go check out the engine compartments just to make sure they're relatively clean. They don't have to be completely steam clean beautiful, but you really want to look for excess. If there's oil dripping out or, or, or if there's water in there, which would be bad, um, or excess rust. So just kind of peek through and see what you see so you know what you're getting into. Also, some surveyors will inspect the engines and others will not. So when you're hiring a surveyor, do make sure that the surveyor will do the engines or whether you have to hire a separate person for that. Okay, after the engines, I will then look at the chart plotter and the electronics that are there. So I will ask the seller to fire that up um, and you can tell a lot from it. Number one, what kind of condition is it in? How old is it? Uh, they'll likely tell you the age of their chart plotter and electronics but you also can tell, is the chart plotter communicating with the other electronics, you know, the, the wind meter, I know that's not the right name for it, and anonometer, <laughs> I don't really know how to say that word, um, but you know what I'm talking about. The thing on top of the mask that goes around and around and around, that's what I'm talking about. Make sure that they are communicating with each other and also the depth finder, you wanna make sure that that is working as well. And if they're not, you want to ask them, why they're not working. It could indicate a significant problem with the electronic connection, which means things are going through the mast and they're not working. That's a big problem. Or it could be it just needs to be cleaned or something like that. So definitely just pay attention to whether the electronics are working. Also, you want to make sure that it has the type of electronics that you are interested in having. Um, our first boat, you know, we had to add AIS, we had to add radar. Those were expensive to add, but we knew it going into it. Uh, you just wanna make sure a lot of people assume it's got all the electronics. Um, it may not, and it's pretty expensive to add those. So make sure you know, number one, if it has them, and number two, whether they are working properly. So back to the interior of the catamaran, one thing that's very important to me is airflow. Now that can be from the various hatches you can open. Um, it can be from fans. It can also be from AC units. You wanna make sure that if it has AC that they are all working. Um, do make sure you just kind of peek at the units to see what kind of condition they look like they're in. If they're willing to fire them up, have them fire them up. Um, but also again, the hatches, any kind of doors, windows that you can open, make sure you get enough airflow. There are some boats that just have horrific airflow problems and they're very stagnant and hot. Um, and other boats are very, very well designed with beautiful airflow throughout. So do make sure that the airflow is something that if it's important to you, that it is sufficient for what you are going to want. Now, also on the inside, I always check out the galley. Um, I am a cook. For those of you who don't know, I have another YouTube channel called The Spicy Apron. You can check that out. Uh, it's all about cooking. But I like to cook, and yes, I cook a ton even on our boat. So the galley is very important to me. I check out the condition of the galley. Um, is there a lot of rust in there? Because a lot of times people will wash their dishes with salt water and then that becomes a huge problem uh, if it's not properly done. Always check the faucets. It should have some sort of filtered drinking water faucet. Make sure that's working or if it's not, find out why. Uh, look at the filter for that. See what kind of condition that is in. And then also just look at the regular pots and pans and dishes and cups. And, and again, if everything's just kind of crammed in there and not well organized, you know, that's not a great indicator that the seller has taken care of the boat. So just look at it all and make sure that it works for you. And the next thing that I like to look at is the engine access areas. Uh, usually they are on the inside. A lot of them are also on the outside, but there's usually some engine access areas on the inside. In one or two of the cabins, maybe under the bed, just make sure the access is adequate. Um, I'm not a very big person and frankly, I'm not the one crawling back there usually. So um, it doesn't need to be huge, but you need to be able to access. Just make sure the access to the engines is not too restricted. And then the last one that I wanna talk about, well, I do have a bonus after this, but um, 
This is kind of a personal preference, but pay attention to the helm station, where it is, what's the visibility, and is it protected from the elements? A lot of people like um, aft helm stations because they feel like they are more <laughs> one with the ocean. They like to be back there. Uh, not me. I prefer to be more protected. I like to kind of stay out of the sun when I can. Um, and I like the helm to be centrally located. Um, either port or starboard side doesn't matter, but that way we can have protection all the way around. Uh, I like a hard bimini because it just offers a little bit more protection. Some people prefer the helm to be up high so they can see a little bit better. You really just have to kind of get on a lot of boats and see what works for you. I can tell you when we brought our boat from Florida through the Panama Canal up the west coast of Mexico, um, protection became a very important thing. So we learned that we did not like to be pelted with sideways rain, so we made sure we had side covers and all of that for protection. So just pay attention to where the helm is and what is important for you. Okay, now the bonus thing that you need to look for, and this is just if your used catamaran that you're buying comes with a dinghy, I think most of them do, but not all of them do. If it's coming with a dinghy, do look at the dinghy, make sure it's in good shape, make sure it's not deflated, uh, and make sure it's relatively clean. A lot of people let their dinghies get pretty beaten up. Um, and also test the engine that is on the dinghy. Most surveyors will not even deal with the dinghy, so that one is on you, so do make sure to check that out. So those are the things that I like to look for when I'm going to look at a boat before I decide if I'm going to make an offer on that boat. Um, I've had it go both ways. I told you about the one with the rat's nest that unfortunately he ran aground. We did not make an offer on that boat. Um, and then there was another one that I checked out in Florida. And you know, it actually, all of those things checked out really, really well and it was great. Um, and then the survey report came out and it was not great. So we ended up not buying that boat as well. Um, and the little piece of exciting news at the very, very end, we have been in the market for a while. We've gone back and forth on different things. Um, I talk in that other video about using a broker. I think my broker has a fabulous boat for us. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you what it is right now, but I will in the next video. We just need to finalize dotting the I's and crossing the T's, but I am so excited. And yes, it is a used catamaran, but oh, it's just so perfect. So oh, I'm so excited. Uh, so stay tuned next time. Please subscribe and you will be notified when that video comes out. Thank you for watching The Freedom Strategy and I will see you next time.